In this video, I'm gonna show you how combining common compositional rules can help you to create more compelling photography now, like right now. My name is Pi, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. Well, hello. Welcome to Sweater Corner. Okay, so here's the deal. We all know common compositional rules, the most common rule of thirds, but we also have shapes and we have triangles and diagonals and leading lines and frames and frames within frames and light theory, color theory. There, there's tons, okay? It's difficult to remember them all and oftentimes it can be even more difficult to put them into practice. So I have a trick to help you create more compelling photographs right now. And that is before each time you press the shutter, aim for every photograph to combine two or more compositional rules. And I want you to identify them. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. Let's take a look at a few images here. Now for this first image, what I was aiming for was perfect symmetry while featuring shapes within the scene. So to do this, I placed my couple onto the rock formation and I cropped it so that rock would kind of have a triangle shape at the bottom center of the frame. The camera has been positioned to ensure that the background mountain is kind of the larger triangle that remains perfectly centered, but it sort of frames the entire scene. So already we have kind of these two triangle shapes, both symmetrical, both kind of framing and leading into our subject and scene. Next, I positioned the height of the camera so the road kind of acted like a diagonal leading line directly into our subject. I felt like if it was in any other position, it just would have been more distracting than it was helpful to the composition. Finally, I'm also using a light to ensure that our subject is essentially the brightest point in the frame. So we're using a flash to light them from the left side to make them the brightest part of the image. So here we're combining multiple compositional techniques to create an image that's compelling and visually interesting to look at. Let's look at another image. For this next image, I place my subject, the bride, in the brightest part of the composition directly in front of the window where we had that nice light kind of coming through. Next, before I even picked up the camera, I just stood up and kind of walked around the scene to see if there's any foreground elements that we could add interest by creating kind of depth and shooting through something in our shot. What I found was this lovely kind of door where if we stood on the other side, we could actually use the door to frame our subject within the actual frame of the image. Finally, the door also had these wonderful leading lines and we positioned the height of the camera to make sure that our leading lines kind of led directly into our subject. So in this image, I've placed my subjects once again in the brightest part of the scene. They're framed directly over the road and I'm standing at a distance. We're shooting on a 35 millimeter lens, shooting through the trees and we're allowing the natural kind of foliage and this kind of opening in the tree to frame our subject while also leaving a lot of negative space in the frame. So all the other leaves kind of act as negative space that allows to kind of pull directly into our subject. Finally, I added a sense of motion to the image by asking him to give her a twirl. And this creates a sense of kind of movement and a little bit of more interest than just simply a static pose. Okay, so one more. For this image, we have six or seven different compositional elements that are at play here. First, our subject is placed in the center of the frame. And we're again, working with a symmetrical composition, but we have the buildings that kind of frame her on each side. On top of this, in addition to framing our subject, those buildings are giving us a vanishing point that drops directly into our primary subject. I also lowered the camera position so that we could place our model's head and torso over the brightest area of the background, the sky. I wanted that bright area of the background to kind of lead the eyes in so that we focus directly on her. On top of that, she's been positioned in a place where we have nice natural light from the scene kind of making its way into the frame and right onto her face to kind of leave her as the brightest area of the image. I also instruct her to take a wide position stance because since the camera was shooting from a lower perspective, I wanted to give her a sense of strength over the frame and I wanted the pose to match that. So we kind of widened out the legs and gave her kind of this crossed arm pose looking off frame to kind of give her that sense of strength. On top of this, I selected her outfit based on the colors that we might naturally find in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And adding to it, we took it into post-production 
And for all of these images, we're using Visual Flow preset to create a soft sense of warmth that kind of ties all the colors into each other. So for this image, what you really see are the warm tones along with kind of the underlying blues and pastels in the image. So that's it. And next time you guys are all out and shooting, I wanna challenge each of you, before you press the shutter, see if you can identify two or more compositional techniques that you're using to tell the story, to bring the subject out in your frame. I hope you all enjoyed the video. And if you did, please engage with us. This helps us out tremendously on YouTube. You guys can give the video a like, comment below and let us know what you'd like to see next, as well as subscribe to the channel. And if you guys wanna find me, I'm on Instagram at PyGersa, or you can also find us on YouTube at SR Lounge. Bye.